Hello, I'm Kirk Rodriguez, and this talk is about a new system we've developed called CLP, or Compressed Log Processor. CLP is unique in that first, it can losslessly compress text logs, achieving a compression ratio that's at least two times higher than general purpose compressors like GZIP. And CLP can search these compressed logs without decompression. So its resource usage is orders of magnitude lower than common log search tools like Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch. Today's internet companies contain a large number of services that generate text logs. For instance, here's a simplified log message from Hadoop. It contains a timestamp, some variable values, and some static text. Logs like this provide crucial runtime information about the system and are widely used for many purposes like debugging, security forensics or auditing, trend analysis, and so on. To perform these analyses, companies ingest their logs into search tools like Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch. In fact, these tools are so widely used that the companies Splunk and Elastic have a combined annual revenue of nearly $3 billion. And we've also heard from some large IT companies that these are their most useful tools. But they consume a lot of resources, which is problematic because internet companies generate petabytes of logs. For instance, eBay reported generating 1.2 petabytes of logs per day in 2018. If we do some quick math, at an approximate cost of two cents per gigabyte per month for hard drive storage, it would cost eBay over $50 million to store the uncompressed logs generated in a year. Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch work by building indexes on these logs, treating them like regular text but the index adds storage overhead. And even though the tool might apply lightweight compression to the logs, the total amount of storage used is still within the same order of magnitude as the original logs. As a result, companies can't afford to keep their logs searchable for a long time. Instead, they keep them indexed for just a few weeks, and then they archive them using a general purpose compressor like GZIP. But once compressed, the logs become unsearchable. This is because these compressors typically use a scheme where values encoded later depend on values that were encoded earlier. For instance, if you have this log, the compressor will first look for repetition in a sliding window. In this case, it'll find AB at position 3 as a repeat of the one at index 0. So instead of keeping the repeated substring, it replaces it with a length-distance pair. The distance is the offset from the repeated substring to the original substring, and the length is the length of the repeated substring. The next repeat at 7 will have a distance-length pair of 4-2, but 4-2 refers to the previous repeated string, so during decompression the previous string needs to be decompressed first. So searching for a pattern essentially requires decompressing the entire data. But decompressing petabytes of logs is painful and resource exhaustive. So the unfortunate reality is that log search and archiving are mutually exclusive. So before we get into the details, let's see CLP in action. Here we've already ingested 14 terabytes of logs and CLP has compressed it down to just 328 gigabytes. That's 2.26% of its original size. Now let's say we wanted to search for error logs related to containers. I could enter a query error star container. CLP supports wildcard queries so we can enter the star wildcard to match any number of characters. Right now CLP is searching the compressed logs and only decompresses matching results. This graph shows the distribution of results over time. 
And we can see a lot of unknown host exceptions. So what if we wanted to list all the unreachable hosts? For this, CLP supports piping results between operators. So first we can parse the host ID by piping results to a regular expression of operator. And here we have the regex keyword, and this expression just captures the host ID and saves it in a field called host. Then we pipe these results to the unique operator. What we end up with is a list of all the unique hosts that are unreachable. And besides the web UI, users can also script their queries using CLP's APIs. And CLP also exposes a fuse interface, so users can access the compressed logs through a file system as if they weren't compressed. So here we have a fully featured Linux terminal, and we can browse the files and directories. And we can also use find to look for specific logs. And then we can open a file, and it will be transparently decompressed. So how does this all work? CLP is based on the observation that text logs are highly repetitive. For example, a log like this will be repeated many times with the only difference being the variable values. And even many variable values are highly repetitive, like IDs or IP addresses. So CLP uses a domain-specific algorithm to exploit such repetitiveness. Essentially, it extracts the static text and repetitive variable values into dictionaries. In this example, CLP can identify that info, task, assigned, and so on, is the static text. So it'll put it in the static text dictionary and map it to the ID 4. In practice, we refer to the static text as the message's log type. CLP can also identify task 12, 172.128.0.41, and container 15 as variable values. So it'll put them in the variable dictionary, mapping each one to its own unique ID. So the original log message can now be encoded as the following sequence of integers. The message's timestamp, encoded as milliseconds since the Unix epoch. The message's log type ID, 4 and a sequence of variable IDs corresponding to the message's variable values. The last hex value in the variable column corresponds to the last variable, 0.335. CLP automatically identifies that it is a floating point number, which is not likely to be repetitive. So it encodes it directly in the encoded message instead of the variable dictionary. Since the two dictionaries are shared by a large number of messages, CLP essentially deduplicates the log types and variables that are in those dictionaries. CLP has an algorithm to automatically separate static text and variable values without any user annotation. Or users can optionally provide schemas to tell CLP how to parse the logs. Finally, we apply a general purpose compressor to the encoded data to save even more space. But this design creates challenges for search. Because we split different parts of the message into different dictionaries and the encoded message, when given a search phrase, we need to carefully determine whether it can match contents shared, stored in one of the dictionaries, or the encoded message, or some combination of all of them. And wildcard searches further complicate matters. For instance, consider this query with wildcards, which matches the previous log message. Container star could match a container ID in the variable dictionary, or it could match static text that's part of the log type. Similarly, 172.128 star could match part of an IP address in the variable dictionary, or it could match part of a non-repetitive floating point value stored in the encoded message, or it could match static text that's part of the log type. And as this table shows, each possibility results in a different log type and variable values that need to be searched for in the dictionaries and encoded messages. And CLP considers all of these possibilities in parallel. The paper describes how we address these and other challenges in detail. So next, let's see how CLP compares to existing tools in our experiments. 
The paper contains detailed evaluation results such as how easily CLP scales to petabytes of logs. So I'll just touch on two things here. CLP's compression ratio and speed, and its search performance. At a high level, we want to see how CLP bridges the gap between log search and archiving. So we evaluate against tools optimized for each task. For archiving, we compare against common tools, common general purpose compressors, like gzip, zstandard, lzma, and ppmd. For search, we compare against Elasticsearch, Splunk, and ripgrep, which is a grep alternative that's faster and can transparently search compressed archives. So to start, let's look at compression ratio. We use four different log datasets. They are OpenStack logs, Hadoop logs, all the files under slash bar slash log for over 30 Linux servers, and 15 years of Apache web server logs published by the US Securities Exchange Commission. We can see CLP's compression exceeds all the other tools with an average compression ratio of 32.2. In comparison, gzip has a ratio of 16.38. And Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch also apply light compression on logs, but their compression ratios are only 2.86 and 1.75, respectively. So the size of their index log is within the same order of magnitude as the uncompressed logs. So next, let's look at compression speed. We compared CLP's compression speed with the search tool's ingestion speed. Therefore, this measures how soon the log generated in real time is available for search. As the figure shows, CLP's compression speed is at least an order of magnitude faster than the tool's ingestion speed. And CLP's compression speed is similar to gzip, where gzip is one of the faster compressors. Just a quick side note, CLP's result is better than what we cited in the paper because we've done some optimizations since publication. Next, let's see how CLP's search speed compares. We created a set of 13 queries that exercise all of CLP's execution paths. For example, we have queries containing only log types, queries with variables, their combinations, and so on. And they cover a wide range from ones that return no results, a few results, and over a million results. Here are the completion times for each query on each tool including index-based tools like Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch. On average, CLP is 4.2 times faster than Splunk Enterprise, and 1.3 times faster than Elasticsearch, and 7.8 times faster than RipGrep. This is because CLP operates on compressed log data that is orders of magnitude smaller, so its search speed is faster without using an index. Specifically, CLP is faster for queries that return a lot of results, and competitive for queries that return few results. For some of the queries where CLP is slower, we can actually enable a caching feature where the cache is persistent, yet negligibly affects compression ratio. This is represented by the red bars in the figure. In this case, we can see CLP outperforms both Splunk Enterprise and Elasticsearch in every query by an average of 40 times and 17.8 times, respectively. Uh, for related works, they either focus on co log compression or log search, but not both. So there are a lot more details in the paper. So in summary, CLP achieves unparalleled compression by exploiting the re repetitiveness of text logs. In addition, its algorithms allow search without decompression, in effect, combining archiving and log search, something that was just impossible without CLP. We've open sourced the core of CLP, and you can also try its cloud service for free at yscope.com. But CLP is only the beginning. Now that we have a foundation for resource-efficient large-scale log analysis, we can start to really exploit the value of logs. For instance, using tools like Stitch and Log20 with the ultimate goal of automating the debugging process. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out CLP.